Namaskar, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor and pleasure for me to be welcoming you to the inaugural of the Virtual Auto Technology Partnership Summit and Expo being organized for the first time on a virtual mode by ACMA. The entire auto industry has gone through a very, very significant disruption. But thankfully, with the support of the Indian government, the industry is now witnessing a V-shaped recovery. There is a lot of resurgence of confidence. And in this backdrop, ACMA, with its international counterparts, brings to you this summit and expo. I apologize for the slight delay that happened in our starting the program because of the internet issues uh, of because of security reason. Without much ado, I request for my team to play the inaugural video, which symbolizes the inauguration of the event. In normal circumstances, we would have a formal ribbon cutting, but we cannot do that today. So can I have the video, please? I now invite President ACMA, Mr. Deepak Jain, to formally welcome all of you to this very unique virtual expo and summit. Mr. Deepak Jain, President ACMA, please. Thank you, Vinny. Uh, before I start, let me on behalf of ACMA also apologize for this delay because of the back-end digital uh, problems which we are facing. I hope from now on we will not have any other disruptions. His Excellency Sri Sanjay Kumar Verma, Ambassador of India to Japan. Ayukawa-san, President Siam and Managing Director, CEO Maruti Suzuki Limited. Oshita-san, Vice Chairman and Executive Managing Director, Japia. Murahashi-san, Chief Director General, Jetro. Sri Nirmal Minda, Chairman and Managing Director, Uno Minda Group and Past President ACMA. Sri Prasad Bakre, Director, Sumida Electric. Sri Ashim Sharma, Partner and Group Business at Nomura Research Institute. Sri Sanjay Kapoor, Vice President ACMA and Chairman, Sona Comstar. Vinny, Director General ACMA, ladies and gentlemen. Ohio Gozaimas, Konnichiwa. A very good morning to my friends from India and a good afternoon from a friends from Japan who is joining in today. It's a great privilege for me to extend a very warm welcome to you to the first ever virtual auto technology partnership summit and expo supported by our partners Japia and Jetro from Japan and also by our counterpart associations from US, Canada, Brazil and Europe, our esteemed customers from Siam and the IPO forum. At the outset, I would like to place on record a sincere appreciation for His Excellency Sri Sanjay Kumar Verma, Ambassador of India to Japan, and the entire team at the Indian Embassy for their support. The Ambassador would recall that we had last met in May 2019 in Nagoya, where he had addressed over 500 Japanese investors at the India Automotive Industry Forum. His leadership and guidance have indeed helped strengthen our economic ties with Japan, especially in the auto sector, where our Japanese players have played a noteworthy role in shaping the Indian automotive industry. I'm also extremely thankful to Japi and Jetro, with whom we have been working for the last two decades to promote partnerships and collaborations between the Indian and Japanese auto component industry. Today, we can boast over 200 such partnerships in our sector alone. My sincere gratitude to Ayukawa-san for having immediately agreed to my request to be part of this Japan Day celebration and the inauguration session. Sir, we are extremely grateful for you for your leadership at Siam in driving the agenda of the entire Indian automotive industry forward as also your unparalleled contribution towards building 
a strong and resilient auto component base in the country. Your leadership during the lockdown, during the pandemic has indeed been exemplary and unparalleled as well. As I reflect back, it was the coming of the Japanese auto majors in India, Suzuki-san and Honda-san in the mid 80s, which transformed the entire automotive landscape in India. Suzuki-san, Toyota-san, Nissan-san, Honda-san and Yamaha-san have now become household names in India and are contributing to the growth and development of the mobility ecosystem in the country. We are celebrating the Japan Day today to honor their contribution to our industry. Let me now take the opportunity to update you on the state of the automotive industry in India. The automotive industry in our country registered a turnover of US $50 billion in an ex, an, with an exports of 14 and a half billion US dollars in FI 2019-20, registering a CAGR of 8% over a period of six years. In the backdrop of the pandemic and the lockdown, the automotive industry faced unprecedented disruptions in the first half of the fiscal year 2021. The industry, through agility, flexibility, financial discipline, and collaboration, has displayed remarkable resilience and has come back strongly with the unlocking of the economy. Today, we are witnessing a V-shaped recovery and we are confident that the growth in the automotive Indian market will sustain. I'm happy to mention that the government of India has been very supportive to the cause of the Indian automotive industry. India's union cabinet has most recently approved the production link incentive scheme for 10 sectors of which the auto and auto components is a prime focus that will extend almost US $7.85 billion or 57,000 crores worth of incentives over a period of five years. The PLI scheme aims at enabling the Indian automotive industry becoming globally competitive, attract investments, create economies of scale, enhance exports, and make India an integral part of the global supply chain. In fact, it is a step forward in the direction of realizing our Honorable Prime Minister's vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat or a self-reliant India. Yesterday, our Honorable Finance Minister gave further impetus to the automotive industry by putting an aggressive stance on infrastructure spending, as well as to also give a formal structure towards the much-awaited scrappage policy. Today, we are here with the twin objective of promoting matchmaking between India auto component companies and our Japanese counterparts, and also to encourage the Japanese auto component manufacturers to invest in India and export back to Japan, taking advantage of India's competitive and manufacturing capabilities. It was Chairman O Suzuki of Suzuki Motor Corporation himself who had said, make in India is not alone or enough. It is make quality in India, and I'm sure with Japan's collaboration and inputs, India will also become a landscape towards competitive and quality manufacturing. I extend a cordial invitation to our Japanese friends to invest and to collaborate with our tier one and tier two suppliers and become a part of the India's growth story. Today, we have 45 leading quality Indian auto component manufacturers displaying their capabilities and products. The government of India is committed to offer investors from Japan a single window for clearances and speedy decision making. ACMA will be only too glad to connect Japanese small and medium enterprises with their Indian counterparts. Our friends from Jetro, along with ACMA, are very proactively taking this initiative forward. As the government of India strengthens its emission and safety regulations and connectivity in vehicles gains ground, IT and electronic contents will become sizable in vehicles. With India's well-established strengths in software and embedded systems, code developing and manufacturing auto electronics is yet another opportunity for Indo-Japanese cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, with bright prospects of sevenfold growth in the automotive industry in India, let me once again invite you to partner with the Indian auto component industry for a mutual benefit and a win-win situation. ACMA will gladly assist in this collaboration. Thank you very much for your patience and your valuable time today. Thank you. Uh, Deepak San much for setting the context of this very unique event today. Uh, as you said, there are 45 exhibitors and each day of the event, we will have a day dedicated to one of our partner countries. 
Today is Japan Day. Tomorrow is the day we celebrate our partnership with the Euro. And then the third day, we celebrate the partnership with our friends from the USA. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is Mr. Yasuyuki Murahashi. Murahashi-san is the Chief Director General of the Japan External Trade Organization. He assumed office in July 2019. He has vast experience in working in geographies such as Middle East, Southeast Asia and Africa. And he is expert in trade development, in investment promotion and in business strategy. May I invite Yasuyuki Murahashi-san to please deliver his address. Thank you. Uh, His Excellency uh, Sanjay Kumar Varma, Ambassador of India to Japan, uh, Mr. Deepak Jain, President of ACMA, Mr. Kenichi Ayukawa, President of SIAM, and Mr. Masashi Oshita, Vice Chairman of Japia. Distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am Yasuyuki Murahashi, a Chief Director General of JETRO, a JETRO New Delhi office. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to speak at this exciting event. So as I don't need to mention about JETRO activity here, everybody knows JETRO very well. I very appreciate very much for your cooperation to our activities in India. In India, automotive sector has been the most active industry of the business exchange with Japan for many years. Of approximately 100,000 Japanese companies established operation in India, almost half of them are automotive sectors, are the most enormous and have a big, largest presence in India. JETRO has been supporting expansion of Japanese companies into India and business exchange in the automotive industry, as we have been conducting a various cooperation with ACMA activities, such as Auto Expo, last few years. Not only ex developing product of the Indian market, but also there is a move to expand business in third countries, such as Asia and Africa. For example, uh, Marchi and also Nissan are accelerating new, initi new initiatives, such as the exporting model to develop in India to emerging countries in the Middle East and Africa. In addition to making India, the movement to employ make for world are emerging. With the fight against pandemic COVID-19, the importance of the automotive industry has not changed. JETRO is responding to the support by promoting digitalization, same as this event. And in last September, I like to introduce our activities. We held an online business matching between leading Indian Tier 1 automotive part manufacturers and Japanese companies. The purpose of meeting was to explore the possibility of the collaboration and makes core components, such as electronics parts, which are currently not produced in India. So we will continue to support opportunities for Japanese companies to create new business with India in collaboration, in cooperation with ACMA and other relevant organizations in India. Finally, I would like to conclude my wishing that session will lead to further development of Japan-India economic relations in automotive industries. Thank you for listening and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. That JETRO under your leadership is putting uh, to take forward the relationship of the Indo-Japanese Economic Corporation, especially in the automotive space. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I now have the honor of inviting uh, a very special friend of mine, uh, Mr. Masashi Oshita, uh, the Vice Chairman of the Japan Auto Parts Industry Association, JAPIA, as we call it. 
a quick introduction of Oshita san. Uh, he graduated from the Faculty of Law University of Tokyo in March 1979 and thereafter graduated from the Faculty of Economics University of Tokyo in March 1981. Uh, Oshita san thereafter joined the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry METI and served there until March 2016. He is currently as I said, the Vice Chairman and Executive Managing Director of the Japan Paths Auto Industry Association and he has played a very significant role in bringing synergies between the Indian auto component industry and the Japanese auto component industry. May I request Oshita-san for his address, please. Thank you. Deepak Jain, President of Bakma, Mr. Sanjay Kapoor, Vice President of Bakma, and distinguished guests and visitors. I am Masashi Oshita from Japan. It's my great honor to be here today to congratulate on the inaugural of Auto Technology Partnership Summit and Expo. Due to the coronavirus, it has become more and more difficult for us to get together. In this sense, I believe this virtual event is a quite timely new initiative. I'd like to express my sincere respect to the ACMA people who are involved in the preparations and to all the participating companies. And also thank you for holding the Japan Day on the first day of such a precious opportunity. I heard that the ATPSE is an online exhibition and an individual business meeting with the aim of promoting partnership between the Indian and the global auto parts industry. I believe that this event will contribute greatly to the further development of India's old parts industry. Japia, Japan Old Parts Industry Association, is the counterpart of ACMA. Just as Japanese and Indian parts manufacturers, Japia and ACMA have a long history of cooperation and cross-working relationship. I myself have been meeting with ACMA people every year since I took office at Japia in 2016. For example, in February two, uh, 2019, there was a business matching expo in Yokohama held by ACMA. At that time, I remember a meeting with Minda-san and the president at that time and my close friend, Bidi-san. Furthermore, last February, just one year ago, I had a chance to visit New Delhi with the members of Japan to participate to the conference of seven countries auto parts industry associations in conjunction with the auto parts or the Expo 2020 component show. It's just a year ago, but uh, it seems very long time ago. At that time, there was no name for COVID-19. It was just called the new coronavirus, and it was only an epidemic in a limited area of the world. But later on, the coronavirus pandemic made it impossible for us to come and go. As a result of COVID-19, the global automobile market was damaged. Japan also in a difficult situation. I know that the Indian automobile industry is also in a very difficult situation now, but I believe India has always been a country with high potential. Global automobile sales are also declined by about 14% in 2020 compared to the previous year. It is said that it will take several years to return to the situation before coronavirus. We hope that the coronavirus will end as soon as possible due to the effectiveness of the vaccine that has finally started to spread. Under these circumstances, the automotive industry is under pressure to make new change, changes in relation with global warming. And major countries around the world are moving forward with the electrification effort. In Japan, Prime Minister Suga, who followed Prime Minister Abe last year, has declared that Japan will aiming to be carbon neutral by 2050. And in, in, in automotive sector, discussions have begun to shift all new car sales to electric vehicles, including hybrids and plug-in hybrids and fuel cell vehicles by the mid-2030s. However, electrification of cars is not an easy task due to various reasons. Without significant innovation in terms of battery capacity and the price, EVs will not be competitive to replace ICVs. Also, without government policy support, it will not be able to spread. In terms of power supply, it is also necessary to improve infrastructure 
such as installation of battery chargers. In addition, the demand for electric power will increase as electrification progresses. So decarbonization of power generation is also required. The electrification of automobiles is of course, one means to solve the problem of global warming, but it will not solve all problems. Zapier determined to tack the challenge change changes of electrification. Of course, this challenge can be a threat to the auto parts industry, but at the same time, it provides us a good opportunity. In order to achieve this challenge, I believe that we must also consider to have cross-border collaboration between industries. Therefore, the collaboration between Japan and India will become more and more important. Now, the cooperation between Japan and India in the auto parts industry has also evolved. About 40 years ago, when Maruti Suzuki started their business in India, many Japanese parts manufacturers began to enter to the Indian market. The member of com companies uh, of Japia are about 430 companies, that is about half of uh, that of uh, ACMA, mostly belonging to the tier ones. And among them, about 100 of them have production bases in India. In terms of all industries, there are more than 1,500 companies that are based in India. A recent example of a Japanese investment in Maruti Suzuki's South plant in Gujarat. I hear that the battery plant jointly established the next to the Maruti Suzuki's South plant by Suzuki, Denso, and Panasonic is also just waiting to start operations. Another new trend in the world is the development of digitization. As a result of coronavirus, Digitization is advancing in many aspects, such as the spread of telework and webinars like this event. The digitization of automobile is also expected to progress. India is traditionally known for strong IT sector, and many IT engineers are working in Japan. I believe that great opportunities for Japanese and Indian companies to form alliance in the field of automotive digitization and electronics. There are still other areas where we can, we can cooperate, and I believe that we need to work together to develop our businesses. Lastly, as I mentioned at the beginning, the purpose of this event is to promote partnership between the about 50 Indian companies and global auto parts industries. Also, today's Japan Day is expected to provide a good opportunity to discover business partners in the Indian market. This is a great opportunity to make contact with leading Indian auto parts industry that could be important partner in the various fields, including electrification and digitization, which is expected to grow in the future. I hope that the collaboration between Japan and India, India will progress further than ever before. Now we are in difficult situation to come and go on both sides. So we can only communicate through the web and the email. With the early contraction of the coronavirus, I look forward to seeing you very soon. Finally, I will conclude my word to uh, express my sincere appreciation for your various time today. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for talking to us about uh, the venues of cooperation between India and Japan. And of course, uh, as a partner, we will work together on this. Thank you once again for sparing time and joining us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I now have the pleasure of uh, inviting uh, Mr. Ashim Sharma, partner Nomura Research uh, Institute, NRI as we call it, to make a presentation on future trends and opportunities in the Indian auto component industry. A quick introduction, uh, Mr. Sharma is a B.Tech and an MBA in manufacturing and operation research. Uh, he's worked across the value chain in the automotive uh, sector and has deep insights into it. Uh, so, Ashim, can I invite you for your presentation, please? Thank you. Uh, who are participating in this conference? Uh, I would request if my presentation could please come on.
I cannot see my presentation. presentation. So I'll be walking you all through the overview of the auto component industry, the trends uh, in the industry as well as the way forward. Next slide please. Starting off with the overview. Next slide please. So we see that the automotive uh, auto component industry has grown at a healthy rate. If we look at the stable years, which is uh, FI 16 to FI 19, there was a there was a very steady growth at about 13 and a half percent. Of course, FI20, we started feeling the slowdown in the economy and thereafter the COVID-19 pandemic further battered the economy, which brought down uh, the overall growth rate in the auto component industry as well. However, when we see in terms of different components, clearly engine components forms the largest portion, followed by suspension, braking, body chassis, driveline, transmission, steering, electricals, electronics. And also in terms of end use, uh, about 55% of the supply is to OEMs, about 25% is exported, and the rest goes to the aftermarket. Next slide, please. If you look at how the industry has been through uh, the current financial year, on account of the COVID-19 pandemic, the entire automotive industry was battered and same was the case in India too. And estimates suggest about 2,300 crores worth of money was lost on each day during the lockdown phases and about three and a half like jobs were also lost in the same period. However, we see that once the unlocking happened and all segments grew, uh, that growth was possible because of the resilience of the auto component industry that was able to come back and supply to all the various segments within the country and also cater to their export obligations, primarily on account of the fact that they were able to quickly come up with new standard operating procedures that enabled distancing, uh, use of advanced digitization, automation, and cost reduction. Uh, which clearly shows that in today's times when we talk not just about the efficiency and the responsiveness of supply chains, clearly the auto component industry has showcased the resilience in the supply chain in the face of the pandemic. Next slide, please. Now moving on to the trends in the auto component industry. Next slide, please. We see that clearly the five trends that are shaping up the industry are one is consumers are demanding more and more convenience in cars. They're getting more digitally savvy. So more and more digitization connectivity is coming into vehicles. Safety is ever increasing and uh, we are seeing advanced collision avoidance systems, multiple airbags becoming more and more commonplace in cars. Shared mobility, which has taken a bit of a backseat due to COVID-19, but in the long run still is expected to come back. Also alternate fuels, which is not just electrification, but alongside electrification, also things like hydrogen fuel cell and natural gas, which would be driving the alternate fuel economy tomorrow. And also a dynamic regulatory environment, uh, which is shifting towards tighter emission and safety standards. As a result of this, to keep up with these trends, three major aspects, which are electronic components, electric vehicle components, and light weighting are becoming very important for the auto component sector. Next slide. Going through each of these trends, we see in, as far as electronics is concerned, from connected cars to autonomous driving, electronics are shaping the automotive industry. Also convenience features, safety features that are increasing in vehicles are also leading to a rise in the electronic content in vehicles. Also, there is a strong push towards electrification across vehicular segments. And on account of that, there is expected to be a huge shift in the overall value chain as well. And many of the components that were being made by OEMs would tomorrow go to auto component suppliers. And there would be an additional need for components also in the charging infrastructure part of it. Also light weighting uh, on account of two reasons. One is fuel emission standards are getting more and more stringent. And second, also because electric vehicles have an added weight on account of batteries because of which light weighting is coming further into the focus. Next slide. 
Overall, if we see the Indian automotive electronics market is expected to grow at a very healthy rate of about 12%, reaching about 8.7 uh, billion in FY26. And if we see in terms of applications, clearly safety and advanced driver assist systems followed by infotainment, body electronics and powertrain is going to drive this trend. And a host of components, whether it's microcontrollers, which would form almost about 27%, followed by actuators, processors and sensors would constitute large part of this electronics opportunity. Next slide. Also, if we see in terms of the safety features that are getting into vehicles, things shown in green are the ones that are already there in vehicles, whether it's seatbelt reminders, reverse sensors, ABS, airbags, etc. The things in orange, which are currently found in higher end models, but are becoming more and more commonplace in mass market vehicles as well. For example, active park assist, 360 degree camera, adaptive headlights, drowsiness alert, and adaptive cruise control will further fuel the demand for electronics. And in uh, the future, we would also get things like the enhanced accident response system, which turns on interior lighting, unlock doors, and also uh, send signals to uh, the uh, back-end uh, response centers would start coming in our vehicles, as well as the advanced emergency braking systems or AABS would also come in, all of which would increase the electronics content in the vehicle. Next slide. Coming to the second part of it, which is electric vehicle components, as you can see on the left part of this slide, clearly we see the value addition is going to shift. It would either become in-house in case of some OEMs or would shift more to the component suppliers and therefore it becomes uh, uh, vital for component suppliers to upgrade their current competencies to meet the need for growing EV segment. There would be obsolescence in case of certain vehicle in certain uh, vehicle categories in terms of the components that are supplied to ICE engine vehicles and therefore some new opportunities like battery pack assembly, battery thermal management systems, electric motors, obviously the onboard charger or the power control unit uh, would uh, come out as big opportunities in the future and it's estimated by around 2025 the size of this opportunity would be close to about a billion dollars. Next slide please. Also, I think well known that the architecture is going to change when we move from ICE to electric vehicles. And therefore, in, on account of this, about 40% of the electric vehicle components are going to be battery pack, motor, inverter, controller, and the onboard charger. And also the composition of non-ferrous metals will increase uh, on account of the increased electric wiring and modules in electric vehicles. Next slide, please. Uh, Third part of it, which is light weighting. So we see clearly demand for fuel efficient vehicles, uh, as well as uh, the emission standards becoming more and more stringent. After BS6, we could have real drive emissions, RDE, as well as the cap, uh, all of which uh, would necessitate the use of light weighting in vehicles and also electric vehicles, as I mentioned earlier, to compensate for the heavy weight of the lithium ion batteries there's expected to be changes brought about in the vehicle to lower the weight of the other components. However, there are some challenges in light weighting because it needs a higher time and cost in the driving those innovations which are lighter weight. However, we also see there are some good case examples from India, whether it's from ZF that made 25% lighter dampers, 10% uh, lighter calipers, or 23% reduction in sheet metal weight of the passenger car, or examples from Maruti Suzuki where the use of advanced HSS and Ultra HSS, where they were able to attain weight reduction about 35% with a cost increment of only 15%. So clearly this is the third area where we do see a lot of innovation happening and technology infusion happening as far as auto components are concerned. Next slide, please. Coming to the final part of the presentation, the way forward. Next slide, please. First and foremost, and this is where the automotive industry and the government have undertaken this part, which is to develop a long-term regulatory roadmap for the country, which takes into account the peculiarities that are in India, that is the state, the current state of the infrastructure, the current state of the technology levels present in the country, as well as the mega trends of connected, autonomous, shared, and electric. And uh, you, keeping all this into account, a long-term regulatory roadmap
is being developed, which would uh, pave the path for the next 10 years in terms of which regulation will come when, and that also gives adequate time then for the auto component industry to also prepare for those regulations uh, in terms of uh, getting the right technologies in place. Next slide, please. We also see that uh, auto component manufacturers and OEMs are taking steps in this direction. Uh, auto component manufacturers are looking at diversification of the product portfolio, taking into account the mega trends of connected autonomous shared and electric, building partnerships to build capabilities, and also embracing digital transformation, which was also seen to a large scale uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. OEMs for their part are also increasing the collaboration with suppliers, also partnerships with government organizations is on the rise, and also supporting tier one and tier two uh, component manufacturers to be able to localize solutions. Next slide, please. On the government's part, apart from looking at developing the long-term regulatory roadmap, they're also incentivizing local manufacturing. Also, some announcements have been made in the budget yesterday. Uh, there is also a need for doing some more things like the PLI scheme for automotive electronics, as also suggested by ACMA, would be a good step in this direction. And also, in upgrading the infrastructure is in progress so that when the new regulations are implemented, they, their true potential or their true benefit to the consumers can be realized uh, through an upgraded infrastructure. Industry bodies on their part are continuously uh, developing standards so that research and development can happen as per those standards and develop solutions that conform to those standards. Also upskilling and training curriculums have been developed to enhance the skill level of the workflows available in the country and also quality control initiatives have been taken by the industry levels to uplift the overall quality levels of both components and vehicles in the country. Therefore, next slide please. Uh, in a sense, we see that clearly for uh, component players outside the country, there is a huge opportunity that India is offering today. Uh, the overall auto components industry is expected to grow uh, almost fourfold from $57 billion to about $200 billion by 2026. There's expected to be a huge technology infusion on account of the fact that we are going to be aligning with UNEC as per the WP29 uh, and also because of uh, the consumer trends of connectivity and uh, wanting more and more infotainment in vehicles. There is also a thinking going upon across the globe on account of the COVID-19 pandemic of de-risking supply chain and India is being preferred by manufacturers across the globe to diversify their sourcing strategy. Alongside that, we also see that alternate fuel revolution is underway in India, whether it is in the form of EVs in two wheelers, three wheelers, cars and buses, CNG in cars, trucks and LNG in trucks. And alongside electric vehicle uh, revolution, we also see the Petroleum Natural Gas Regulatory Board has come out with a roadmap on account of which gas based mobility is also going to make huge strides in the country in the coming decade and beyond. And finally, and also very importantly, India's frugal engineering capabilities can help bring down the cost of technology after it is brought down to India, which also then becomes a solution that global players can take back to their home country and that offers them a competitive advantage in their home markets as well. Therefore, clearly there is a huge opportunity in the country for global players to come in and collaborate with the local players here. And it's about who, uh, who comes, uh, makes the first move in terms of those global players and embraces these tie-ups so as to be able to capitalize on the opportunity that the country is going to offer. Next slide, please. With that, I reach the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for a patient hearing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ashim, uh, for elaborately talking to us about not only uh, the evolution that is happening in the industry and the opportunities thereof, but more importantly, uh, the opportunities that exist for Indo-Japanese collaboration. Uh, I invite our Japanese friends uh, to partner with the Indian uh, companies and harness the Indian automotive opportunity and uh, that's the reason uh, why we are organizing this even today. Uh, we will be sharing Ashim's presentation with all the attendees so that you can uh, make good use of this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the coming of Maruti Suzuki in mid 80s not only redefined the Indian automotive space, 
uh, but it also led to creation of many partnership between the Indian companies and the job Japanese auto companies. Uh, today, I understand there are more than 250 such collaborations of various nature that are thriving in India. And to present one such successful case study, I invite uh, none other than Mr. Nirmal K. Minda, who is the chairman and managing director of Minda Industries. Uh, Mr. Minda is one of our emerging strong leaders, and he has also been the president of ACMA. Mr. Nirmal Minda, may I request you for your case study presentation, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellency Sri Sanjay Kumar Varmaji, Sri Ayukaba San, President Siam, and our esteemed customer, uh, Murahashi San from Jetro, Osita San from Japia, President Ekma, Sri Deepak Jain, and Sanjay Kapoor, Vice President, and other dignitaries on the desk. So, very good morning to all of you. So, may I now request to share my slides, please? Can I proceed? Okay, thank you. So, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Akma, for giving me this opportunity. And I'm really honored to share my views and share the dais of the successful journey of, uh, you know, a success story of JV in India, of Minda story. A quick update, the next slide please. The quick update on, the, on our group, we are about 1 billion group turnover, 62 planned globally, 7 joint venture out of which 12 are, <coughs> 17 joint venture out of which 12 are Japanese, 5 acquisitions, 10 R&D center, 20 different kind of product lines and then we have our own R&D capability of by patents, design registration, and one point approximately 1.8 billion dollar market cap and we have 75 expect in india out of which uh, more than 50 are japanese and 22,000 are employees <clears throat> next slide please these are the quick you know names i mean some of the important names of our joint ventures we started our journey in 1995 with the first joint venture with Chokairika. And uh, we are proud to say that, you know, even after 26 years, we still continue and enjoy a very good relationship. And subsequently, you will see that the different joint ventures, uh, this Chokairika was uh, for the panel and control switches, filters for the Roki Minda, Kose for the alloy wheels, and, uh, you know, Toyota Pusho for, uh, body airbag, body ceilings, and fuel caps and hoses, etc. And then so then for car infotainment and so on. <laughs> so this story still continues. Huh? I'm really proud to be <laughs> proud to say that. Next slide, please. So this partnership has been strengthened. I would say that by leveraging each other's strengths, enable us to provide the best product technology and service to, to the customers. If you look at the our strength on the left side, the Uno Minda strength and the JV partners. So I have just tried to you know, give some glimpse of that. The local management with the Japanese philosophy. So first of all, you need to understand the Japanese philosophy. I myself was trained in 1992 in, Jap uh, 1992 in Japan for almost two months. <coughs> and I understand the Japanese philosophy. So thereby, you know, we could we could translate that Japanese philosophy into our uh, Indian management. Then the Indian supply chain management with the tier two suppliers and, and so on. And then local talent availability. That how do we train local? How do we train local culture to the Japanese culture? And the Indian customer connect. So on the other side, with the JV partners, if you look at the technology is one, which is the important. <coughs> the manufacturing system, the Japanese manufacturing system, you know, the one piece flow, first time right, all those practices we learn and we continue to learn and, and train our people. The, of course, the highest quality level and the global OEM relationship, like, you know, 
they our JV partners they are in con constant touch with the Japanese side and we are in constant touch with the Indian side. <coughs> so next slide please. So there are, these are some of our core principle on which you know our success story pillar pillar of the I would say the our success story. The transparency is the one. Trust and confidence. I think that that is the, the, the pillar, the, the most important pillar. And we have to have a very very open communication. Open communication for anything. You know, suppose you have some issues, you must not hide it. Share it openly as much as possible. And the win-win thinking. You know, always because we we know that we are. We have our goal, we have our objectives, the joint venture partners have their objectives. So how do we create win-win for all the for both the objectives? And of course, the, the, the last one is the respect for the partner view. So if we continue to respect each other, I think we will be able to bond the relation much stronger. <laughs> so these are the group vision which is you know our one of the word of our group vision is the stakeholder continuously and customer is one of our important stakeholder the next slide please <coughs> relationship and open communication so we uh, have structured our communication in a two way. If you look at the left side, there is a sub steering committee which is normally attended six times a year, six times in a year, three times in Japan and three times in India. And we have a fixed agenda of a let us say quality status, our quarterly financial status, action plan for the localized, localized localization, localized engineering and the sales strategy, the growth strategy, and as I said, the win-win, you know, what are the problem areas, how do we tackle those problems area in the company. <coughs> and then subsequently, once in a six month, top to top meeting, which is attended by me and the president of the Japanese company, the name I mentioned, where is, you know, the, this is twice a year, one time in Japan and one time in India. And uh, we take all the significant issues not agreed in the sub steering committee sometime, sometime because the understanding and the communication is not clear, sometimes it may happen. So we try to resolve from top to top if we can solve those, understand each other very carefully and other significant management issues we also take it up and then try to more, more closer and closer. And you will see on the right side of the slide, these are very, very important. Once in three years, we invite all our Japanese partner. As I mentioned, there are 12 partners you will see in the picture. All the 12 will come together. So you will see in the picture, there is a president of Toyota Gose, president of Tokaika, president of Fujitsuten, Mao Densoten, and then president of Kose. So many, all other they join. Of course, they praise us in, in the, while they address the gathering. But they can also share our good point and our improvement area uh, amongst together, you know. So that is a platform we create every three years, which I think is a very, very open communication. And we also celebrate the bottom side of the, the slide is the anniversary. We celebrate five years anniversary, five years celebration, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years and 25 years. So this one recently what you are seeing, this is a 25 year celebration with Chukairika president in Japan. <clears throat> Next slide please. So as we, as we are, and India is fifth automotive market globally and we are importing one lakh crore of auto component, which is 1.4 trillion yen by Indian automotive industry, including component and car industry and automotive. 
Yesterday also we have seen in the budget and under the Atam Nirbhar Bharat, which is self-reliance, India policy for the local manufacturing. 100% FDI is allowed in the auto component. It is confirmed in the yesterday budget about the PLI scheme for the automotive and auto component sector <coughs> with an out outlay of 57,000 crore over a period of five years. So this will, you know, really promote localization of the component and also exporting export opportunity with this kind of incentive and our cost of production will be also lower. So, so there is an ample opportunity as Oshita San and Murashi San said for the Japanese tier one and tier two supplier to invest in India. So next slide please. So my, I mean, I would say that other already recommendation have already been made but a few recommendations from my side that government and private enterprise to create infrastructure for the industry to enable plug and play facilities such as flatted factory <coughs> for Japanese supplier. As you may know, for the tier two supplier, it is very, very difficult to come and buy land and make building and then clearances of all those facilities. So if we are able to either, you know, the government or the private entrepreneur like, uh, you know, the real estate builder can create a multi-story, you know, factory, flatted factories, so that they can just come and buy, bring their machinery and then start manufacturing the product. And all those can be in transport, labor, all those can be managed by the Indian entrepreneur. The second one, uh, thank you, Urashisan, you already mentioned that seven Indian companies and 17 Japanese company participated in your matchmaking. So this is my <laughs> I was requesting that you please continue to do this exercise between Japanese and Indian companies. I think there is a lot and to make understanding from each other and the requirement of each other with the customers. And the third one is the tier one supplier should take a lead, you know, to take a crucial role in building the robust and capable tier two ecosystem by facilitating, facilitating the alliance between the tier two supplier and the Japanese tier 2 supplier more and more because the quality of the tier 2 supplier we need to really catch up and if we are able to bring more and more Japanese supplier in the tier 2 fraternity I think we'll be able to have a sustainable quality and we and the export uh, will be much easier and the last one tier 1 suppliers in India to create a viable scale to attract Japanese tier 2 supplier by forming cons cons consortium and consolidating demand <coughs> See, some time back my colleague mentioned about, uh, uh, Mr. Rashi Sharma mentioned about electronic, electronic component. So, we mentioned about airbag, airbag, you know, there are some inflator. So, these kind of big investment component will not be, we will not be able to achieve economic of scale unless and until, you know, we supply to all the manufacturer in India. So we have to find a way how that, you know, the component, whatever we localize, if they, all these, I would say the CM also and ECMA also to, to take it up in their meeting to, in their, you know, uh, uh, purchasing committee meeting that how can you make a common buyer of, uh, you know, you can promote the localization with the custodian. So next slide, please. So I would say this is my final comment. I would say thank you very much for arranging this show and this, uh, you know, platform by ECMA and SIAM together and I wish all the success for this virtual show with the participation of 45 uh, participants and uh, for this event and many more participants to the future and many more collaboration in the future to promote Japanese auto component industry and India and let us achieve our Atam Nirbhar Bharat and growth in our Indian economy along with the Japanese. Thank you very much. Thank you for this support. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Nirmal Minda. As they say, it takes two to a tango. Uh, and uh, the principles of collaboration, the principles of success that you mentioned, whether it is transparency or trust, communication, win-win uh, thinking, respect are the bedrock of any relationship to be successful. We wish you more power. We wish you great success as you, uh, you know, as you harness more opportunities in this space. So thank you so much.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now the session that we have been long awaiting, uh, I have uh, pleasure in inviting our chief guest for the event, uh, Mr. Kenichi Ayukawa, the president of Siam and the managing director and CEO of Maruti Suzuki India Limited to address us. Uh, Ayukawa-san, uh, sir, in your role as the MD and CEO of MSIL, you have contributed immensely to the development of the component industry in India. And now with you as the president of Siam, uh, the relationship between Siam and ACMA uh, is getting cemented further like never before. Uh, this initiative of partnership uh, that we are collaborating with Siam jointly to bring you this virtual event is another such example. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I also uh, thank you particularly for guiding the industry so well during the pandemic time, uh, a result of which today uh, we are seeing a V-shaped recovery in the automotive industry. It is no wonder that uh, you have been heaped upon with so many accolades and awards. So it's an honor and pleasure for me to be inviting you, Ayukawa-san, to address us. Thank you so much. Please come and take the stage. Ayukawa-san, please. Excellency, Ambassador of India to Japan, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Varma. Chief Director General, Japan External, External Trade Organization, JETRO India, Mr. Yasuyuki Murahashi. Vice Chairman, Japan Auto Parts Industry Association, JAPIA, Mr. Masashi Oshita. President Akuma, Mr. Deepak Jain. Vice President Akuma, Mr. Sanjay Kapoor. Senior leaders from industry and research institutions, Ladies and, and gentlemen, uh, good morning to members in India and good afternoon to those in Japan. At the onset, I'd like to congratulate ACMA for organizing its first ever virtual technology partnership summit and expo. I am honored to be invited. We also feel honored and privileged that Ambassador Barma has given us this valuable time. Ambassador, we are all looking forward to your guidance. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know our two countries, India and Japan, share a very close relationship with each other based on the foundation of values we both respect. I sometimes feel humbled and gratified that Maruti Suzuki is often quoted as one of the most successful examples of this relationship. I strongly believe that what is good for India is good for Maruti Suzuki. Maruti Suzuki believe in compact cars, high efficiency and productivity, maximum localization of all parts in the cars, affordable pricing for customers, and being present near the customer through our sales and service network. If you notice, all these are also what India needs. From day one of our inception, Maruti Suzuki has made effort to making automotive components in India. For this, we have facilitated about 240 technical collaborations or joint ventures or subsidiaries in India. Over a period of time, we achieved very good localization content in our cars. Our direct input are very low. However, in the recent past, because of higher regulation and technology, some inner parts import content has gone up. These parts are mostly 
One, electronic or mechatronic parts. Two, some special grade of coated steel. Three, some parts of automatic transmission. We would like to localize these parts. Also, tooling used in the manufacturer, manufacturer of cars can be localized. I also happen to be a president of Cyan, the Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers, and I can mention with confidence that this objective is not only Maruti Suzuki, but also of the Indian automobile industry. So, whether it is Maruti Suzuki or Cyan, we are committed to work with the component industry to localize these parts in India. For localization of the, these parts, Akma and Cyan do not only need to work like partners, we need to work like one team. This is why this program of ACMA is very important and very strategic for all of us. I would like to give confidence to all com companies in Japan that India automobile sector gives you a good opportunity to bring your manufacturing project on or partners with Indian companies to do this. I'm particularly focusing on electronics and semiconductor manufacturing in India. Globally at present, there is a capacity constraint. If Electronic manufacturer are thinking of expanding capacity. My request, please consider India. We would like purchase from production in India. You would also get an opportunity to export from India. So my message is making India for the world. Your Excellency Ambassador Balmer, when a foreign investor comes to India with his investment, it is basically a statement of trust. Trust that his investment will be safe. Among other factors, this trust comes from long-term stability in the policy environment for investment. It comes from mutual respect for the bilateral understanding, understanding on investment between the two countries. We are highly grateful to you for personal gracing this occasion. Your message will give strong confidence to the, to the automotive component companies in Japan to come and partner or invest in India. I wish success to Akma, Japia, and Jetro in this very strategic initiative. Kindly keep me updated on the progress in such partnerships. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ayokawa-san, for your encouragements. And uh, also, it is no wonder it's a testimony to MSIS leadership that there are more than 240 joint ventures between Indian companies and uh, Japanese companies and that are uh, successfully driving the Indian automotive industry. Uh, your message on localization is indeed very, very pertinent. And under your leadership, both ACMA and SIAM are working closely to achieve this goal of localization. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm delighted to mention to you that we are now joined by His Excellency, uh, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Verma, Ambassador of India to Japan. 
just a quick introduction of uh, Mr. Verma. Uh, he's an IS officer. He's an officer of the Indian Foreign Services in 1988 batch. Ambassador Verma has a rich experience of representing India in several countries, including China, Vietnam, Turkey, and Milan, to name a few. Ambassador Verma is deeply passionate about information technology, artificial intelligence, cyber diplomacy, and delivery of people-centric services using interactive technologies. He is the right man to now speak because the Indian automotive industry or the entire global automotive industry is evolving to be more connected. So Ambassador Verma, may I welcome you and request you to address us, please. Oh. Very much uh, for introducing me. I hope I'm audible and visible. Yes, sir, you are. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, first of all, let me uh, recognize uh, uh, Mr. Deepak Jain, President Akma, Mr. Uh, Murahashi, his good old friend, Chief Director General of JETRO in India, uh, Mr. Oshita, Mr. Ashim Sarma, Mr. Minda, Mr. Ayukawa, who just spoke before me and uh, had uh, given me a few tasks to accomplish <laughs> <laughs> for the Japanese investors. Thank you very much, uh, distinguished uh, participants, uh, panelists, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry I'm outside my office, so probably my voice will uh, uh, be a little feeble, uh, but let me try the best I can. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to deliver the keynote address to the today's inaugural event of the Virtual Auto Technology Partnership Summit and Expo event titled India-Japan Business Cooperation on Plastic and Polymer. The first day of the event has been scheduled as Japan Day, that is India, the investment opportunity. And I'm sure uh, uh, there will be other presentations on specific investment opportunities in this particular segment. Uh, uh, this itself highlights the importance of Japan in the automobile sector in India. Japan is regarded as a key partner in India's economic transformation. In the recent past, the relationship between the two countries has progressed from strength to strength. With economic and commercial partnership forming an important cornerstone of the engagements. The panoply of agreements signed during Prime Minister Modi's visit uh, to Japan in 2018, uh, followed by other agreements signed in 2019 and now 2021. Uh, in January itself, we have three agreements signed between our two countries, which, uh, talk, which tells you the, the importance of the relationship uh, between two of us. Japan's bilateral trade with India totaled uh, uh, close to uh, $16.95 billion in the financial year 2019-20, which is well, well, well below the potential of our two countries. And therefore, uh, there is an ongoing review of, uh, uh, of SEPA, uh, Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement between our two countries, to see how can we uh, upscale and upgrade the trade relationship between our two countries. Uh, uh, Ayukawa san just talked about the investment relationship. Investment relationship has taken a hit uh, in 2020. Uh, I hope that the Japanese companies will show more interest in 2021. Uh, he also mentioned about uh, the, uh, uh, the stability of the policy. Let me assure you that uh, this government in India is completely, uh, uh, completely bound by its promise of providing a stable platform, a predictable investment environment, uh, uh, to all investors, uh, including our friends from Japan. Electric vehicle market is estimated to be a rupees 50,000 crore, which is close to about $7.1 billion uh, opportunity in India, uh, which will be by 2025. Several technology and automotive companies have expressed interest or have made investments into Indian electric vehicle sector. Though this investment still falls short of uh, 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 exploiting the potential which is uh, available there in India before other uh, EV manufacturers uh, uh, sort of come and, and occupy this space, which is left by our most trusted automotive partner, which is Japan. A recent study uh, conducted by uh, Castrol found uh, out most of the Indian consumers would consider buying an electric vehicle by the year 2022. The study also highlighted for an average Indian consumer, price point is close to 23 lakhs, which is US dollar 31,000. 
uh, a charge time of 35 minutes and a range of 401 kilometers from a single charge will be the tipping points to get mainstream electric vehicle adoption. The government aims to develop India as a global manufacturing and research and development hub. It has set up national automotive testing and research and development infrastructure projects uh, uh, centers, as well as national automotive board to act as a facilitator between the government and the industry. We hope that industry will uh, utilize this facility given by uh, the government of India and try to uh, uh, move forward for mutual benefit of the people of India and the industry uh, in uh, largely in the electro, uh, electric vehicle uh, category. The Indian government has also set up an ambitious target of having only EVs being sold in the country. The Ministry of Heavy Industry, Government of India has shortlisted 11 cities in the country to start with for introduction of EVs in their public transport system under FAME scheme. The first phase of the scheme was extended to March 2019 while in February 2019, the government approved PAIM 2, uh, a scheme with a fund uh, requirement of rupees 10,000 crores, which is close to about $1.4 billion uh, on today's exchange rate uh, for the financial year 2020 and 22. Uh, under the union budget 2019-20, government announced to provide additional income tax deduction of rupees uh, 1.5 lakhs on the interest paid on the loans taken to purchase EVs. Uh, this clearly shows uh, the, the intent of the government of India to try and uh, get uh, more and more EVs on the streets and roads of India. There have been some various recent developments which raises excitement about e-vehicle manufacturing sector in India. Elon Musk-led uh, Tesla has registered a subsidiary company to India. To further boost investment, India plans to offer $4.6 billion uh, in incentives to companies setting up advanced battery manufacturing facilities. Uh, we have also noticed that there are some Indian startups and other Indian uh, uh, companies which have been able to develop alternative uh, e uh, batteries, uh, electrical storage uh, batteries, uh, which could be used in EVs of the future. Please look at it. And this I'm saying both to the Indian uh, industry as well as the Japanese industry. Please consider taking a look at it. Please consider uh, uh, taking the products which they are developing forward in your products. Uh, in November 2022, two very important uh, developments took place. One was that uh, government uh, has announced uh, a plan to set up at least one electric vehicle charging kiosk uh, uh, at around 69,000 uh, uh, petrol pumps all over the country. This, this is largely to induce people to go for electric mobility. Uh, in Electric Mobility Conference 2020, Honorable Minister of Road Transport and Highway and uh, MSME, Sri Nitin Gadkari, uh, presented the aim of establishing India as a global automobile manufacturing hub in the next five years. He called auto industry to reduce costs of electric vehicle uh, for enhancing sales while maintaining quality. Uh, he was referring to the study which I just mentioned a little while earlier. A few of the recent initiatives from the government of India, and this is largely for uh, our Japanese uh, uh, investors or potential investors, uh, incentive schemes and tax stimulus have been announced for manufacturing in sectors like electronics, mobile uh, phones, medical devices, and pharmaceuticals. Over the past six years, the government of India has taken several initiatives to promote economic growth and improve investors' confidence, which include the establishment of commercial courts, the insolvency and bankruptcy code, the goods and services tax, the reduction in corporate tax by 50%. You would have noticed various other reforms which have been uh, announced in the, uh, uh, which will be announced in, in the budget this year. And uh, uh, let me assure you that that will be a continuity to Government of India's uh, uh, promise that uh, uh, all the policies will be predictable. All the policies of the Government of India, particularly in the economic sector, will be having absolute transparency uh, of both intent as well as implementation. Just two years ago, India was ranked 130 uh, in uh, doing business, uh, in ease of doing business, and today it is ranked 63rd. Also look at the innovation sector. Today, India is, uh, 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 is uh, rated very well in the Global Innovation Index. 
So probably Japanese companies could also look at three main components, which I uh, always talk about. Uh, one is co-creation, second is co-innovation, and third is, sorry, first is co-innovation, second is co-creation, and third is uh, uh, co-production. Co-innovation basically means to try to scavenge the, the various problems that the, our two societies are facing and try to innovate solutions. Once the solutions are innovated, then we move to the second pillar, which is co-create, which means let's create the products which could be tested in our individual societies with uh, whatever tweaking is required. And uh, uh, therefore, it becomes a part of ma made in India for the globe, for the world. Uh, and uh, the, the final one is co-production, where the industries come into play, wherein those, pro those uh, products which have uh, passed the pilot test in co-creation phase uh, will, uh, should be available to the industry to co-produce and take it not only to the Indian and Japanese markets, but to the global markets. At the end, I would like to compliment ACMA and SIAM for organizing this event during very difficult times and hope that the event would be successful in promoting the business in environment and investment opportunities in automobile sector in India among the stakeholders all around the world. Dhanyavad, arigato gozaimasu, and thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ambassador Verma, for assuring all of us on behalf of the government of India on uh, stability of policy and also predictability of policy. Uh, you did outline a whole host of opportunities that exist for collaboration between India and Japan and that apart uh, your, uh, if I say, the key message on co-innovation, co-creation and co-production is indeed very, very profound and would be dealt upon with due earnestness. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Verma, for joining us and for this very profound address. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we now present to you another successful case study um, on the Indo-Japanese venture. Uh, I invite Mr. Prasad Bakre, the director of Sumida Electric India Private Limited. Uh, Mr. Bakri has been instrumental in creating Sumida's India's expansion strategy as also executing it as its product leader. Uh, based out of Singapore, he championed uh, the cause uh, of his company with Jetro, uh, thus securing a grant under the prestigious Overseas Supply Chain Diversification Support System. Uh, I, 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 I apologize, it's Overseas Supply Chain Diversification Support Program. A lot of the Japanese companies who are invested in entering India can actually utilize this program. Uh, this is under the METI uh, of the, min the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry of Japan government. Uh, I request Mr. Bak Prasad Bakre to kindly make his presentation and enlighten us with his success. Mr. Bakre, please. Am I audible to all Indeed the you are. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, may I have my slides, please? Honorable Chief Guest, uh, His Excellency Mr. Sanjay Kumar Verma, Ambassador of India to Japan, Mr. Keiji Ayukawa, President Sayam and Managing Director and CEO of Maruti Suzuki India Limited, uh, Mr. Masashi Oshita, Vice, Pres Vice Chairman of uh, Japan Auto Parts Industry Association, uh, Mr. Murahashi from Jetro, uh, Sri N.K. Mindaji, Chairman of uh, man, uh, Chairman and Managing Director of Minda Industries, uh, and all my distinguished industry colleagues. It is a pleasure, and I would like to wish you a very good morning uh, for those in India and Konnichiwa to those in Japan. All the speakers who have spoken before me, I am sure we cannot match the size, the stature and the experience of these speakers. But in my own way, let me share Sumita journey of investing in India. My presentation consists of two main parts, a short introduction of Sumita and a quick explanation of our journey in India. Next slide, please. Subida Corporation is a 65-year-old manufacturer of coil-based electronic products. We are listed in the Tokyo Stock Exchange. 
With close to 900 million US dollars in revenues, we are led by our CEO, Mr. Shigeyuki Yamata, and more than 60% of our sales comes from automotive electronic components. Next slide, please. Our Asia operations are led by Japan, focusing on Greater China, Southeast Asia, and Asia Pacific markets. At the same time, we also have Europe operations that focus on Western Europe, Africa, North and Central America. Sumida Electric India, which was established in 2019, is the latest addition to our group companies. Next slide, please. I will move quickly through the next two slides. Our key product groups cater to car safety, remote keyless systems, and various automotive electronic systems. Next slide, please. And for electric vehicles, we manufacture battery, inverter, and motor components. Next slide. Our foray to the Indian market started in 2016 as we started experiencing worldwide trends of electronic components being used in automotives, specifically in the Indian market. Needless to say, the dignitaries who are present here created a fantastic, resilient automotive industry. And we have already seen the strength of Indian automotive industry so far. And gradually, as the world started changing, we thought India would become a very good potential market. Next slide, please. This information is the information we analyzed back in 2017. So the information is about four years old. And at that time, we realized very clearly that there would be a strong automotive component market, especially the electronics market. At the same time, we also saw there were government initiatives. There were multiple changes in regulations, which all showed the promise for the Indian market. Our management in Japan took the decision to plunge into the Indian market and make a commitment. Next slide, please. I would like to dwell more on the journey that has happened since 2017. Our core team at that time was based out of Tokyo. In fact, uh, we benefited immensely from His Excellency Mr. Verma's predecessor, uh, Mr. Sujan R. Chinoy's encouragement, and also various events at the Embassy of India in Japan. I would recommend that my colleagues in Japan and the various companies that are interested in investing in India do attend these events by the Embassy of India. Apart from that, we also got wonderful support from Jetro. Jetro organizes multiple events too, and I also had the privilege to attend one of ACMA's events that happened in Yokohama back in 2018. In parallel, our teams were traveling to India. We met industry bodies like ACMA who ensured the right elements of information were was, was shared with us for various management decisions. We were helped by our local partners as well. And in 2018, our board approved the establishment of the Indian subsidiary. In 2019, within six months, we were able to set up the office. So for Japanese companies who are worried about the procedures or about the time constraints and so on, I would highly recommend that we do consider because the climate in India and the regulations have become much easier and as rightly put by His Excellency, uh, Mr. Verma, the ambassador, the ease of doing business is in a real way very much there. It is very much visible and you can experience it. Next slide, please. The year 2020 brought about a lot of disruption in our lives. The COVID-19 pandemic has ensured that our lives will never be the same again. But for all the industry leaders from whom I can learn, whoever is present here, and also 
for everyone who is working in the industry. We think disruption and innovation are two sides of a coin. In one way, we see the innovation that happens in uh, various industries, especially innovation is a buzzword in the startup industry. They bring about disruptions in various industries. But on the other side, we see the disruption brought about by the pandemic last year has precisely seen innovation come out. One hallmark of that innovation is this conference itself. It has been it is being uh, currently hosted on an online platform. We are having a virtual conference with speakers coming on from different parts of the world. We had to rethink about our supply chains. One of the major challenges for a manufacturing company, especially as a component manufacturer, we had to completely rethink whether we would go, how we would create local supply chains. And that's where we think there is a fantastic opportunity. The climate between both the governments, Indian government and Japanese government is very conducive right now for Japanese companies to look into India and its local supply chain. And I would strongly recommend various industry colleagues to consider this opportunity. We as a beneficiary of the Japan Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industries prestigious uh, ASEAN Supply Chain Diversification Program will continue to focus on our expansion in the Indian market. I think this whole opportunity, the conference itself and the commitment from our industry and governments makes it very clear that we have a lot of opportunities lying in front of us. I would like to thank ACMA. I would like to thank Sayam for giving us this opportunity. And I would also like to mention that on Sumida side, we are committed for the Indian market. We will go forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Bakre, for that very eloquent uh, presentation and especially talking to us about how your company has leveraged disruptions for innovations. Uh, and indeed, ACMA is always there to support our Japanese friends who wish uh, to come and invest in India. Uh, thank you so much once again. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have now come to the end of this very wonderful session. Uh, we had a galaxy of uh, leaders talk to us about their experiences and their vision. Uh, I now invite uh, our Vice President, Mr. Sanjay Kapoor, Chairman of Sona Comstar, uh, one of our emerging leaders, uh, to present a vote of thanks. Uh, Sanjay, please. Uh, Mr. Sanjay Kumar Varma, Ambassador of India to Japan, Ayukawa san, President CM and Managing Director CEO of Maruti Suzuki Limited, Oshita san, Vice Chairman and Executive Managing Director Japia, Murahashi san, Chief Director General Jetro, Mr. Minda, Chairman and Managing Director of Minda Industries, Mr. Bakre, Sumida Electric, Ashim, Partner and Group Business Head Nomura, Mr. Deepak Jain, Vinny, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to all of you. I'm indeed de very delighted to extend a vote of thanks to all our dignitaries, audience, participants who've joined us for this inauguration session of ACMA Virtual Auto Technology Partnership Summit and Expo. As you know, today we are also celebrating the first day of our event as Japan Day in honor of the contribution of the Japanese automotive industry in shaping our own automotive industry in India. The unique thing about this event is that whilst it's virtual, we have, however, been able to leverage technology to bring the entire global automotive industry on one single platform. Your Excellency, Mr. Varma, we are indeed very glad that you have taken time to be with us today. We appreciate the guidance and support extended to us by the Indian Embassy in Japan and particularly by you. You talked about the incentive schemes in various sectors and automotive is highly regarded as a, as a growth sector in India by the government uh, and uh, testament to this fact is that we have a large amount of money being infused in the automotive sector by the government by the way of PLI schemes. You talked about the ease of doing business, India going from 130 to 63. You talked about 
co-innovation, co-creation, co-production. And thank you for giving us you know, your address and encouraging more Japanese companies to come to India. Ayukawa-san, thank you so much for honoring us with your presence and sharing your vision of a collaborative value chain development. It's always inspiring uh, to listen to your thoughts. I'd also like to thank you for advocating our case with the Japanese auto component manufacturers and encouraging them to collaborate with Indian companies. Your initiative of the ACMA CM one team working together is an excellent initiative and we look forward to building a much stronger automotive industry going forward. Your uh, desire to bring electronic and semiconductor manufacturing in India and make in India for the world is an excellent initiative and we thank you for uh, you know, providing us your insights on this. We at ACMA are indeed very grateful to Oshita San, Vice Chairman and Executive Managing Director of Japia, and Murahashi San uh, from Jetro for being present here today and their unstinted support to ACMA. Compliments are also due to Jetro's respective teams at Tokyo and New Delhi for their support and guidance, not just today, but throughout the pandemic. We've had the opportunity and the good fortune to interact with both Japia and Jetro, and we thank you for all the, the collaboration and, and the effort and the help. Mr. Minda and Mr. Prasad, thank you for sharing insights on the success of India-Japanese collaborations through your very own stories. Mr. Minda, your local management with Japanese philosophy is absolutely the right way forward. I like the fact that you talked about four different aspect factories for a plug and play to bring more J companies from Japan to India match make, making between Japanese and Indian companies and tier one suppliers leading the way in building a stronger ecosystem for the tier two suppliers. And I hope we can bring more collaborations in India in the tier two and tier three space so that we can strengthen the supply chain and the ecosystem. Uh, I'm And uh, Mr. Bakri, thank you for your talk on disruption and innovation, how we can bring both together and build a much stronger automotive industry. Finally, my compliments to Ashim for an excellent presentation on the future trends and the opportunities of the Indian auto component industry. The way we conduct business in this post pandemic world would be entirely different than what it used to be earlier. It would require a completely different approach, attitude and processes and the need for increased collaboration and exchange of ideas and technologies was indeed well brought up in your presentation as has always been. And we thank you for all the help that Namura has given us through this pandemic in strengthening the automotive supply chain, whether it be in tool and die or today in bringing more Japanese companies and attracting them to come to India. Lastly, I would like to thank and compliment our team at ACMA for conceptualizing and organizing this virtual expo. The ACMA Secretariat has worked tirelessly for the last few months and the results for us are here for all of us to see. Lastly, I close. As I close, I request all international partners and companies to visit and engage with companies exhibiting over the next few days. Let's all work together to create a new paradigm of creating economic value through partnerships. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, all our esteemed speakers uh, for having joined us today. I much appreciate your support and we look forward to further cementing our relationship with our Japanese friends. Thank you.